Carl, I'm really excited about where we're going with value-based maintenance. I am too. It's a, it's a great opportunity for us as a station to uh, take the maintenance strategies that have developed in the past and to improve those and make them more efficient. It's funny you bring that up. When I came here back in the 80s in the startup days and we got these plants up and running, we really, our PM program was, didn't hardly exist. We, we did our surveillances that were required to do for the license and uh, we lubed some equipment and that was pretty much it. Plants weren't running very good back then. Yeah, and one of the things that I, I remember when I first started here back in 2007, one of the things that we were trained on is the PM programs that were put in place. And it seemed like every time that a failure happened on a piece of critical equipment in the past, a PM strategy was developed and it didn't matter which station it was at, it seemed like every station then took that PM and said, okay, I have this piece of, same piece of equipment, I gotta do that same PM now to make sure I don't have the failure. It seemed like that made our PM program grew extremely large. Yeah, so we started having success in the 90s. A bunch of people got together, a bunch of people that were really into maintenance and maintaining the equipment. We started putting PM programs together. We started putting basis documents together to explain why we were doing things. The plan started running better. And I think what happened was it just, it just kept evolving and evolving and evolving. And pretty soon the idea of I'm doing this to make money kind of fell off of the cliff there and it became all about reliability at any cost. Yeah, you know, the, one of the things that we always talk about is protecting the health and safety of the public. Right. And, you know, those PM strategies were put in place to do that, but a lot of times that failure that happened was on a piece of equipment that, that had no bearing on the health and safety of the public. Right, it was just that we had defined it that it had bearing. Correct. Right. If you look at the labor demand chart that we have here, we've been, um, we have developed a value-based process and it's been running for six plus years now. We got a couple years here to show, to give us some baseline in the data. But if, if you see, we've gone, gone down quite a bit of hours, you know, like 450, 475,000 to 250,000. That's demand of the equipment on our resources based on strategies that we've put in place to minimize the amount of touches that we have to do to keep the equipment running at the right amount of reliability. And it wasn't an easy feat for us to go through, I know some of these, changes that we've had to do for this value-based maintenance. It was a big culture change that we had to do and that's kind of what the efficiency bulletin is about. And what I like about the efficiency bulletin is the second part of changing the industry's culture of reliability at any cost and more is better to one of a value-based maintenance, making sure that we have safety and reliability in a cost-effective manner. And what this means to me as a system engineer here at Palo Verde is going through all our PM programs and those times when we have to figure out what our strategy is going to be on our components, we've gone out and used the actual temp EPRI templates that are available to us today. You know, and those EPRI templates were based on people's ideas of what failure rates would be on certain components throughout the industry. And as we've gone through all this work on creating all the PM data that failure rates and all those things that have happened on components here at Palo Verde, we've been able to take those failure rates, put them into a program and actually determine what the failure rates are on the components here at Palo Verde. It took us years to put this together, so we're, we're leveraging this for the whole industry now, and that's what really gets me excited. When you take those failure histories, and you can start using those to work on your wear data, and your wear data feeds your calculations that give you your failure rates. And if you can start improving the accuracy of those failure rates, you're gonna make more efficient strategy decisions, right? Yeah, that's that right. Yeah, it'll make us make much better decisions. But how do we keep this sustainable for the long term? Oh, this is one, one of the beauties of the program that we have. So well, the, the histories will keep feeding automatically into the data sets at EPRI. Okay. okay. So think about this. Let's say we have a failure on a relay, which, which we've had in the last few yeah. years, on, on a, some critical relay somewhere out out in the industry and input reports say we had a critical failure on this relay go see what what to do well the first thing you can do now is you can go in and you can say okay what kind of relay was it what kind of model is it which of the different templates did it fit into and how many of them are out there wow, that's a great right? opportunity yeah well, i mean what would you do with that it would give us the much better opportunity to look and see what all the failure you know all the different uh, components that are available and determine the actual failure rate Right. Is this, is this something that matters or is it something that doesn't matter? Right, and how much can you control? If I have 10,000 of those relays out there and I've had one failure in five years, I have the very, very, very low failure rate. Yeah. So how much, you do, do, how much energy and time do you really need to put into that one failure? What PMs add value 
to my components in the system and will allow us to maintain reliability. And that's the end state for the entire industry. The entire industry wants to make efficient maintenance strategies that are both nuclearly safe and enhance reliability of the critical equipment. And as a system engineer, I'm really excited about this initiative because it's going to allow me to look at my PM strategies and look at those strategies that are actually adding value to maintain equipment reliability. And that's what this uh, Delivering the Nuclear Promise initiative is all about, Carl, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to maintain efficient maintenance strategies that improve my nuclear safety and enhance my reliability on my critical equipment also. And that's something we can all get behind. <laughs>